Asia, it's a land of surprising beauty. Its plant life astounds. Its wildlife amazes. Its bird life intrigues. Its formations inspire. And yet Asia is faced with a frightening dilemma. Because sharing this vast territory with some fascinating members of the animal kingdom are well over half the people of the world. The effect on wildlife is profound. Their territory continues to shrink in direct proportion to the exploding human population. Animal icons like the tiger and the panda both face possible extinction in the wild in the next decade. But many lesser known creatures face the same fate. This then is their story, that of the many unusual and beautiful animals and birds of Asia and the threat to their survival. The icy mountains of central Japan are home to the snow monkeys. Macaques that have to survive the harshest of conditions, frequent blizzards, sub-zero temperatures. Survival becomes a group effort. Entire troops of macaques foraging in deep snow for whatever sustenance they can find. That means digging deep and furiously for a buried blade of grass. Or chewing snow to prevent dehydration. Many will eventually start chewing the bare branches. Others will gnaw on the roots of trees. All are commodities scarce enough to fight over. It's not only the macaques that are pursuing the vegetation either. Another contender 
is the rare serro, a cross between an ox, goat, and antelope. The serro goes to great lengths in pursuit of a meal, scrambling up cliff sides, even climbing up into the branches of trees. With conditions so hellish and food so hard to come by, macaques have been driven to the brink of extinction. But, as opposed to so many other Asian species we're about to witness, macaque numbers are not now under threat, with some 30,000 counted in the last survey. As a species, the macaques live in a very ordered, hierarchical society. Their groups are dominated by the strongest males, which protect their territories from others. They're extremely affectionate. Mothers shelter and caress their young. Adults cuddle together for warmth. Families groom one another. While all members of the troop find time to play. But of all their rituals, there's one that's clearly their favorite, at least for the monkeys around Nagano in central Japan. To reach it, they have to leave the forest and scramble down the mountainside. Within sight of their target, a major obstacle a small stream, its waters close to freezing. It requires great agility and skill to negotiate from one rock to another. What they're working so hard to reach are the steaming hot waters of a natural spring. Like Russian bathers in a Siberian sauna, they immerse themselves. At first, they simply soak, luxuriate, a touch of hedonism normally associated with human behavior. But the peace never lasts. One of the troop's elder males shows his dominance.
It's enough to upset the shyest of babies. Once the fighting ends, the pool returns to tranquility. Youngsters chew on twigs. His elders scour the pool bottom for dead berries and leaves. while others prefer to drink the hot water. It's all a very social affair, this daily visit to the hot springs. Grooming and nitpicking are considered essential. In all, some 250 macaques will trek to this hot spring every day, cleaning themselves and each other, regardless of the weather. For the macaques of Nagano, these red hot waters bring great pleasure to an otherwise icy existence through winter. Their time in the springs, nothing short sheer bliss. The dry, grassy reserves of central India are well stocked with a wide range of wildlife. Their tenure is relatively safe for all but the star resident. Here, and right across Asia, the tiger is in crisis. By far, the biggest wildlife tragedy of modern times. In the wild, tigers are increasingly difficult to find, with just 5,000 left. Numbers are falling fast. because while they exhibit incredible power and strength in hunting other wildlife, they're no match for the guns of poachers. The poachers, in turn, are responding to an insatiable demand for tigers from China, a demand that is growing dramatically rather than waning. As these tiger cubs and their mother rip apart a fresh kill, they're under threat from old Chinese customs. Many Chinese are loath to break medicinal practices centuries old that demand tiger ingredients as a source of healing power. Here in India, poaching is escalating because the Chinese have slaughtered every single tiger in their own country with the exception of 20 still roaming in the wild. Elsewhere in Asia, three subspecies of tigers have been wiped out since the last world war. The five remaining species face a similar fate. As they seek relief from soaring temperatures, the tigers of India are facing even more pressure from poachers today than ever before. Despite tough efforts, such as new and large reserves and anti-poaching squads, killing continues 
due to widespread corruption. In the past three years, a third of all the tigers in India have been wiped out. From 80,000 a century ago, India's tiger population now numbers just 3,000. And when several of them come together, it's easy to understand why the tiger has been worshipped and glorified by man. They're one of the world's most magnificent species. Extinction would be a tragic loss. Of all Asia's endangered icons, none has stirred more international concern than the giant panda. Less than 900 of these black and white beauties still roam in the wild in central and western China. Their numbers slashed by poaching and by substantial loss of habitat as China's human population explodes. Hunters have killed them for trophies, for their fur, and for Asian diners who pay high prices to eat exotic bears. Another problem for giant pandas is their staple diet of bamboo. Periodically, entire forests of bamboo will die off. Even when it's in plentiful supply, giant pandas will eat copious amounts of it. They've been recorded as eating as much bamboo in two days as the weight of an average human being. In fact, eating consumes most of their waking day because their digestive systems won't absorb the fiber. Pandas are usually solitary creatures, but when they engage in this bottom rubbing, you know it's time for them to get together. This action is a come on, their method of spreading their scent to other pandas. Even when they do finally mingle, their sexual urges are not strong. More often than not, they're content to start eating again, which explains why zoos have so much trouble with their captive breeding programs. When they're not eating or sleeping, they can be extremely playful. As for their territory, they'll go wherever they want to, even if it means dragging their massive weight straight up a tree. This fine specimen takes care of his paw, a most extraordinary apparatus that basically has two thumbs, one at either side of his fingers, allowing him to grab, tear, and manipulate food with ease. All this activity can be very tiring. As this panda demonstrates, 
They'll sleep wherever they feel tired, often high in the branches of a tree. Roaming the same high country as the giant panda is another cute but mysterious creature that carries his name but is only very distantly related. The red panda is still causing consternation among scientists who aren't sure whether he's related to the cat, the raccoon or the bear. Academics noted his existence 50 years before they found the giant panda, and the fact that both ate the leaves of the bamboo plant led to an early view that they were related, hence the name. One century on, the consensus after DNA testing is that giant pandas and the red panda both split from the bear lineage some 30 million years ago. These days, the red pandas are an increasingly rare sight in the wild. Feral dogs take their toll, as do poachers, hunting them for their fur and as pets. But their biggest threat is loss of habitat as whole forests of bamboo are cleared for housing estates and grazing land. When they do team up, they'll often break into a bout of playful fighting. Such vigorous activity is the prelude to extended preening sessions. followed by plenty of sleep. The waterways of Asia are home to several species of otters. Like their kind the world over, the oriental small clawed otter is a prolific swimmer and fisherman. Fish and frogs make up the bulk of their diet, along with crustaceans and mollusks. They're extremely playful, grooming and interacting with one another for a major portion of their day. Even at night, they huddle closely together. They're known as extremely intelligent animals and will work in a pack to pursue a meal. Regrettably, these otters are prized for their pelts and hunting throughout Asia has continued unabated. Another hunter never far from the water is the fishing cat. As his name implies, he's a proficient fisherman, using his partly webbed feet to scoop fish from streams. While they're completely harmless to man, the arrangement hasn't been reciprocal, with fishing cat numbers now in critical decline the result of hunters, pollution, pesticide poisoning and trapping for furs. As we're about to see, they're not always capable of killing what they pursue. This cat dabs repeatedly at a fleeing turtle. Then, while two other cats feud, the turtle demonstrates just how impervious he is to them.
The cats stalk him, but off he saunters, his hard shell obviously all the protection he needs. Blessed by a full moon, creatures of the Asian night emerge to watch. Hunger also drives this herd of Asian elephants. Smaller by one third than their African cousins, nonetheless their appetite is still of gargantuan proportions, with most of their waking hours spent feeding. In one day alone, they'll eat the equivalent in weight of two adult men. But the bamboo leaves they feast so much on are also highly acidic. To counteract that, they eat mud. Trunkfuls of nature's own antacid to line their stomachs. Daybreak heralds a burst of activity across the rainforests. Elephants are back into the bamboo, breaking down hardy trunks with ease to reach the fresh upper foliage. As work animals, their strength and intelligence have made them highly prized in clearing much of the forests throughout Asia. In the wild, they'll rip into trees to eat the bark. But ironically, elephants, both wild and domesticated, have unwittingly contributed to the destruction of their own natural habitat. Their numbers have been annihilated, so much so that only 40,000 remain in the wild. That makes the Asian elephant truly endangered. For those elephants which do survive, there's an abundance of natural threats to their existence. Insects are a particular annoyance, with every elephant developing their own way of getting rid of them. But the ultimate relief from both insects and the oppressive heat comes with water.
water to drink. Water to cool themselves. Water to play in. But these water holes are not theirs exclusively. Below the surface lurk vicious predators. there's one more self-indulgence. To spray themselves with dirt and mud, nature's own mud pack that helps keep their skins in healthy condition. Another creature under threat in Thailand is the La Gibbon. This mother and baby have survived, whereas almost a million others have been slaughtered over the past century. These gibbons are known as the singing apes. Their evocative territorial calls including five different cries of pleasure, another four calls for distress. They're also the fastest apes in the world, males often swinging at high speed in pursuit of enemies. These two young adults chased and snapped at each other for more than an hour. While gibbons are frightened of water and never swim, they have developed some innovative methods of drinking. This mother collects droplets of moisture from the spray of a waterfall. She then sucks the moisture off the wet leaves before descending to the water's edge for a more quenching drink. Here, she soaks her fur in water, then licks it off before her youngster snatches its share. Her final gesture is to shake her entire body vigorously and repeatedly, a signal of satisfaction. The volcanic island of Komodo in the eastern arm of Indonesia 
is home to a most formidable creature. The Komodo dragon is an awesome sight, lashing out with a forked tongue that's coated with toxic saliva. They're the closest living relative to the dinosaurs, and with a weight twice that of an average man, they're also the world's largest reptile. Komodo dragons are capable of high speeds over short distances. These dragons are also known to hunt the island's other occupants, which is undoubtedly why so many of them take refuge beside the ocean. Because inland, surrounded by thick scrub, it's far easier to stalk prey. They're even known to hunt humans. It's here that they use their forked tongue to pick up the scent of prey. At rest, they display their weapons, claws sharp and powerful enough to kill a deer or pig in a single blow. A lethal tail. and a skin thick enough to ward off any attacker. Despite that armory, the Komodo dragon is a species in decline. Scientists estimate that there were never more than 7,000 of them, but today only 700 remain their greatest threat coming from deer poachers who rob them of their biggest source of food. Sunrise beside the water in the Malaysian state of Sabah is the ideal time and place to spot its most bizarre inhabitant. That's him, leaping through the rainforest canopy. He's the proboscis monkey, distinguished by his enormous red nose. That, and a pot belly. And it's that prominent nose that allows him to utter his deep nasal call. Blessed with a slightly smaller nose, females are very attracted to the male bellow. They'll move from one harem to another just to find the noisiest partner. Proboscis monkeys are nosy in more ways than one. They'll climb long distances in search of ripening berries. Yet as fascinating as these monkeys are, they too are threatened with extinction. Loss of territory and hunting, cutting their numbers by 85% in Sarawak over the past 20 years. Fortunately, these reserves in Sabah are strictly policed, allowing some hope for them and their neighbours, the orangutans. And what an ingenious species these orangutans are. Firstly, they'll burn off great amounts of energy.
Then they'll chew on whatever takes their fancy. And finally they'll rest, building a nest high in the treetops, weaving branch into branch to give themselves a perfect sky-high place to sleep. Back on the ground, juveniles become very attached. Ever since their mothers were taken, these two orphans have lived and played within arm's reach of one another. But while these scenes may appear touching, they do demonstrate how vulnerable their species is, so adored that many, like their parents, have been captured to become household pets. As we're about to see on the nearby Indonesian island of Sumatra, theirs too is a species under serious threat. The dense rainforests of Sumatra are the setting for our final encounters in the wilderness of Asia. Here roams the rare two-horned Sumatran rhinoceros. The smallest of all five rhino species, their numbers are down to 400 as demand for rhino horn continues to motivate poachers. Thankfully, Long-tailed macaques are such prolific breeders, they are not endangered. Large troops of macaques can be spotted on the shores of Sumatran beaches, feeding on shellfish. And inland, Peacocks still live in profusion. As always, the courtship display of a male as he fans his feathers and shuffles his feet is mesmerizing. But the true icon of this island is the orangutan, the only big ape to be found in Asia. Slightly different in color than their cousins in Borneo, they too are normally solitary creatures, coming together for a courtship ritual that lasts up to eight weeks. He may be placid today, but this male can become very aggressive. He'll often stare at his opponents or use his pendulous throat pouch to utter a chilling territorial call that can be heard many valleys away. Once they've mated, both will resume their solo existence, so much in contrast to other apes and monkeys that live in groups. The female heads for the high branches to resume her nomadic lifestyle. Here she'll feast on a varied diet, leaves, fruit, bark and insects.
only when she gives birth will she end her solitary existence. It's a powerful bond that develops, so much so that mother and baby will remain inseparable for the next three years. For the first months, baby receives his primary nutrition directly from mother. But slowly, he's weaned onto a more substantial diet. Only after three years does the young orangutan begin exploring. It's a very long and slow learning process though, a further seven years to elapse before he becomes fully independent. It's in this phase of growing up that they'll begin to make contact with other youngsters. The interaction continues for much of the afternoon, that is, until mother decides that enough is enough. For all female orangutans, their motherly instincts are extremely strong their preference being to remain alone with their young. And yet, as safe as these two appear today, their species has also been listed as endangered. Orangutan numbers are down to as few as 5,000, logging and poaching the culprits. As with so many other unique but threatened species across Asia, man has much to answer for.